Oh, uh, hey. <laughs> um, okay, let's get going. Hey there guys, it's Lee here. Welcome to iMindBlock. So in this video, I'm gonna be doing a quick video about upgrading my primary workstation that I'm currently using for Chaya plotting. So at the moment it's running okay, but um, I think there's some room for improvement. So today we're gonna to be using my primary workstation, fitting a new NVMe uh, SSD. Hopefully that will increase our plotting time and help speed up the overall process. Um, so that's what we're doing today. Uh, let's jump into it. Okay, so this is my primary workstation. It's what I use basically every day for all of my day-to-day -day, uh, bits and bobs. Um, so it's quite a new build. The only thing that's kind of old is this um, GPU, which is a GTX 970. I've kind of had that for quite a few years now. And um, because all of my other GPUs kind of get utilized for mining, I kind of end up with just this one, just really just as a basic uh, workstation. So CPU is a 3900X. We already have a NVMe, if you can just sort of see it tucked away down there. It's a Corsair MP600 and it's a Gen 4 NVMe drive. So that's a really good, really fast drive. It's currently one terabytes. One of the problems with using that at the moment though, is I only have about 300 gigs of free space. So it really only means I can only do one plot at a time on that. I also have a few SSDs. Again, most of these are kind of full, so I've, I've cleaned up one of them and I've got a terabyte on that, but it's really a bit slow for chia plotting, so won't be making much use of those as well. So what I do have is a spare NVMe slot down here. The only difference is, is this one up here is a Gen 4 slot, and this one I believe only is a Gen 3 slot. So what I'm gonna do is take out that one and put it into the Gen 3 slot, so my overall operating system will run a tiny bit slower, but then I'm gonna put in a larger NVMe uh, drive and I'll show you that in just a second. So this is the new drive that we're gonna be upgrading to. Um, it's kind of very similar specification to the MP600 that I've already got in there, but this is actually really good value. I don't know, a lot of shopping around and this come in at 240 pounds for Gen 4 NVMe drive and it's two terabytes, so that's really quite good value. One of the other important factors is that this has actually got, um, it's really high endurance, so it's uh, from memory, I think it's 3600 uh, TBW, so that's really good. If you're gonna be using uh, any NVMe or SSD drives, make sure they've got really high endurance rating. You really want a couple of thousand TBW. If you get a drive with 600 or something like this, it's really not worth it. You'll basically burn it out in no time. For every um, you know 100 gigabyte plot or K32 plot that you write on these things, uh, about 1.6 terabytes is written to the drive. So if you have one with a low TBW rating, you're basically gonna burn out the drive or the warranty in no time at all. So this has got 3600 TBW and that's really uh, important, really uh, crucial for this. So good value, good capacity and good endurance. So that's why I chose uh, this drive. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be fitting that down there where the MP600 is, moving the MP600 down there and then we'll be kind of ready for plotting. One other thing that I'm also gonna be doing is I'll be using this new uh, PMY Accelerate drive as a temporary file. Uh, so our temporary uh, plots are gonna be written to there. Then I'm gonna copy those across to the SSD. And then from there, I'm gonna be moving them to um, like an external hard drive. And I'll show you that in uh, just a second, what I'm actually, the final kind of destination, if you like. So just a quick look at the final destination drive for our plots. It's an 18 terabyte Western Digital Elements uh, drive. Um, it's really good, I'm really pleased with the performance. The write performance is actually much faster than a lot of the external drives that I had in the past. So it's USB free, but the write speed is roughly about 200, 220 um, megabytes per second. So that's really quite good. A lot of external drives, you only get about 100. So it's about twice as fast as those if you use the uh, USB free interface. So this is what I'm using for my final destination drive. So it's gonna go, the plots are gonna be written to my NVMe drive then to my SSD, and then finally they're gonna end up on it here for farming. So that's kind of the setup that I'm using, and I'll talk more about that in just a moment. So I've just removed the graphics card, so now you can see the NVMe slots just a little bit better. We've got the MP600 up the back near the CPU. You can also see the RAM as well, I didn't mention that either. So it's DDR4, and I think it's 3600 megahertz, I can't remember exactly, um, but that's also important as well. You basically want 32 gigs of RAM if you can get it and that will help you with your uh, plotting. And then we've got the other NVMe drive slot on the left-hand side there. So let's uh, get those swapped over.
Okay guys, that's it. We have our NVMEs fitted. Okay, so the new drive is fitted. I'll just give it a quick run through on Crystal Dismar just to make sure it's performing as expected. I'll just give it one quick run and these are the results. So that seems to be working fine. So now let's set it up for trial plotting and I'll show you how that looks uh, using this new drive. Okay, so we've got the trial wallet open. Um, sorry about the picture quality, you know, just making do with what we've got for the moment. So if we go down to our plots, you can see what I've currently um, had plotted. So we're currently on 3.32. So I want to add a new plot. Uh, it's going to be the K32, so it's the standard kind of plot size. In this case, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do four. I might be able to do five plots with this NVMe drive, a two terabyte drive, but I'm going to just run it with four just to see how it goes, and I'll probably do a test afterwards with five. So I want to plot in parallel this time. I'm going to have zero delay, so it's going to basically produce all four plots at exactly the same time. Uh, the RAM, uh, I'm just going to say 26 gigabytes and I'm going to go with 20 threads um, because I do use this computer as like a, my main sort of workstation. Uh, number of buckets, you leave it as it is and QName, leave that as it is. Uh, disable bit field plotting, you can just leave that as it is and exclude vinyl directory, uh, leave that unchecked too. So the temporary directory is now going to be our new drive, so it's the PMY Accelerate. Um, I'm just going to create a folder in here. I don't know if it makes any difference, but I've always used folders on the previous temporary drives. So I'm just going to use that again, just in case it makes any sort of a weird error because there's no folder or something. So we're going to go chart temp on our new NVMe drive. The advanced options is they're just a second secondary temporary folder. I'm not sure how that works. I need to look into that. Um, I'll try and confirm and get back to you. So I don't know if it works as like an overflow or whether it uses two temporary drives. I'm not too sure. I'll have to look into that. And our final directory is going to be this MX500. So this is just a one terabyte um, SSD. And I guess I'll just put in a folder in here too. So now we're going to be right into uh, the temporary file is going to be like an NVMe drive and then our, pl our plot destination is going to be the SSD and then from there I'll move them over to the external drive. Sorry did I select that. Okay so that all looks good. Let's uh, start creating the plots um, and I'll be checking back shortly. So you can see that they've all started so we've got our four plots and let me just open up the uh, task manager and we can just sort of see the right in performance. So typically what happens is it happens in bursts, so you get like a burst of like 100% CPU, CPU usage and then it'll drop down as it's writing and reading and then our new drive is down here. So one thing I noticed is even with the uh, NVMe drives that the write speed is never really that fast up to like the maximum uh, performance of the drive but it seems to be doing okay. So what I'm going to do is just going to leave this running, it's going to take four hours something like that maybe five hours and then i will continue on and we'll see how we're doing okay guys we're back again with another little update so i decided to abort the previous plot and attempt because two plots were running at seemingly full speed and two plots were lagging well behind and it really shouldn't have been like that so i thought it could be down to one of two things uh, one was the ssd drive was getting hot so let me just show you crystal disk mark um, the NVMe was getting really hot. At the moment, it's still 66 degrees, but even now it's still currently getting um, up to about 80 degrees. So that's something that needs some attention. However, I don't think that's actually causing our slowdown of the plot. It might be um, affect all of the plots um, as they're running together, but certainly not two of the plots. So I think one of the issues was with the way that on this particular machine, the motherboard, uh, by the way, it's an MSI, X570 uh, Pro A version. So I think it's the way the um, PCI lanes are divided up. So what I've done is, I'll just have to show you under the desk. It's uh, quite a mess under there, but you can see what's going on. Um, so what I've done is I've moved my graphics card from the first slot down to the um, secondary 16 time slot. The thing is with that secondary 16 time slot though, is actually it's a 16 times slot in terms of the physical dimensions, but it actually only runs in four times mode. So I think with this particular motherboard, the, the Gen 4 NVMe top slot um, shares the PCI Express lanes with the 16 times PCI Express slot. 
So I think if you have a graphics card in that top slot, I don't think you get the full bandwidth from that NVMe port. Um, that's just a theory, I can't confirm, but that's kind of seemingly what happens at the moment. So I've moved the graphics cards down to the bottom slot and that seems to have sped things up. So um, I've got to do a little bit more investigation, but that's where we are now. So I'll just let it run and complete and then I could, could do like a, a further update. Okay guys, so we're just about to finish up here. It has been uh, approximately six hours and 35 minutes and the plots are just kind of just finishing off there and they're about to be written to the um, SSD. So I expect it will probably take about seven hours uh, in total. So that's currently where we are. So I just want to do a little update on that. Um, a couple of things to note is the NVMe drive is still getting very hot. It's actually cooling down. It's been hot as um, 80 degrees. So that's uh, something I really need to work on. Um, I've already ordered a heatsink for that. Um, that should help and hopefully that will help with the, the performance. I think it has been throttling uh, throughout this process. Um, still need to do more experimentation. I'm gonna try different combinations of CPU and memory, but also um, whether to use just two dual plots rather than four, um, and also just a single plotting but a larger plotting process. So I'll do various tests and experiments and see how that uh, performs as we go on. Um, and then I'll just provide you guys uh, with the updates. Okay guys, so just finishing off here, it's been actually a really long day. Uh, you guys um, get to enjoy the short condensed version of these uh, videos, but for me it actually has been uh, a very long day just uh, testing. Obviously I'll manage to do some other work at the same time, but um, we got there in the end. So the results with this NVMe drive, um, there's certainly room for improvement. It does get hot. We need to add a heatsink to help with the cooling. Um, there is a problem with this motherboard. It's just by design, the PCI Express lanes. So I need to check out um, how that affects my um, graphics card and how I'm gonna work that, get, get it back in there. Basically, if I run it in the, the four times slot, it then butts up against the MP600, the other M NVMe. The heat sink on that is too big, so then I can't fit in my GPU. So I've had to um, just basically make a mess to, to get it all to fit in there. So I need to rework all that. Um, but from this point onwards, I'll do um, a bit more testing and then hopefully trying to provide some better results for you guys. Basically, so you guys can get a short and a more condensed version and you can plot quicker, faster, easier. Um, and you don't have to kind of jump for these hoops like oh, I have to. Anyway, so I'll leave it there, guys. Any questions or comments, uh, hit me up down in the commentary below, and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. See you guys next time.